Today I'm going to be going into a deep dive on resizing designs. It's a question we get asked a lot within our groups. Now if you like these types of videos, make sure you subscribe and also hit that bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. I might as well give you the bad news right away and that is regarding resizing designs that are not the native file format of the software that you use. If you're taking a machine file format like a DST or PES or VIP file and you want to resize that on your machine you are going to have some real limitations and you probably won't get successful results if you go in and try to blow up a design 30 or 40 percent up or 30 or 40 percent down. It'll require a huge amount of editing of that file and for the most part I could probably re-digitize it quicker than I would try to edit it. So with regards to non-native formats it's a real hit or miss and I don't even really want to go down that road. Now with regards to a native file format uh, we are a, an official Hatch reseller. I have been digitizing with the uh, Wilcom commercial platform for over three decades. So that's why we include the EMB file format with most of the designs that we have on our site. That is a file format that cannot be read by any embroidery machine. It can only be loaded within a Wilcom or Hatch platform. And it is the native file format of that software, which means that I can go in and change all the attributes and properties of the actual objects that I've created during the digitizing process. And that's really where we can do some incredible things and resize designs up or down, but it's not just as simple as making it bigger and saying everything's going to be all right. There's some extra things you need to look out for. Now when I digitize a design, and I'm just going to use the design that I have on screen here as an example, this is digitized at seven inches in height. And the design itself is done uh, at that size and I do a lot of blending and shading within artistic designs and then when I go to resize that design and offer it on our website in different sizes I do have to make sure that I work from that size that it's digitized at and then I'll bring it up an inch or down an inch on either side but I still have to make sure that I look out for a few things to make sure that it's going to run properly. If I am going to resize it more dramatically then issues can appear because I'll have a pull compensation which when you digitize designs for a push and pull comp at the original 7 inch size and then I want to make it 9 inches that push and pull comp is going to stay the same within the properties when in reality uh, going up that much you'll probably have to adjust some of the nodes of objects so that you don't get gapping on stitches. So there is still going to be editing involved. I'm going to do a deep dive into this design that we see here. I'm going to make it from 7 inches to 9 inches, show you what I might look at to change and then I'm going to change this from let's say 7 inches in height to fit within a 5 by 7 hoop so I want to make sure it's around you know 4.95 inches in the smallest X or Y and then I'll show you some of the things that I might alter there as well. So it's not just as easy as clicking a button and voila it's done. You still need to look at the design, the amount of trims, some of the objects and properties and change those according to the results that you want. Now the first thing I'm going to do is call up the design information and I'm going to look at this design. It's approximately 7 inches in height, almost 53,000 stitches. There's 13 different colors and 20 different stops. That means that there is 20 different color changes in this design. Uh, one thing I'll say right off the bat when you're dealing with designs that have a lot of detail or artistic merit, you are going to have more color changes in the design to promote better registration. If you have an inkling to go in and do a, you know, sort of a, a color sort where it's going to reduce the amount of colors within a design, uh, you're welcome to do that, but I can almost guarantee you that the registration will be off after you perform that automated function. A good digitizer will digitize things in layers and it will ma be mapped in a sequence in which you're going to get the best results in sewing uh, even on more difficult fabrics. Now there is also 66 trims in this design and 66 trims may sound like a lot but it's not really because of the amount of layers and objects that are going on within this design. This is a really detailed artistic merit design and if you want to get right down to it there was 485 separate objects that were digitized within the 
the creation of this design. So this is where digitizing is kind of fun because it is a huge map that you have to kind of figure your way around and make sure that you get good results. Now you might notice here that it does say on the bottom if you're familiar with Hatchet you can't have different recipes that you use so different templates whether it be normal or whether it be leather or Thai silk or you know fleece any of those would be a recipe and people often ask me what recipes I use when I'm digitizing uh, I have been doing this for a long long time for well over three decades and I have my own recipes that I've formulated within my commercial platform that I still use uh, today I, I came up with those probably 30 years ago when I was a commercial puncher and I would digitize the design so that I would get hopefully the best results on most mediums and those generally were like a golf shirt material PK knit and I would try to digitize based on finished hats. So my recipes have stayed pretty consistent, but I do use the software and change them in certain circumstances, and I'm gonna do that within this design as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this original file, I'm gonna select everything, and I'm gonna make it actually nine inches in height. Now normally I would only go maybe an inch up if I were actually doing this safely to put on my website so people would have a uh, an eight, a seven, and a six inch file, but I wanted to go a little beyond the extremes, and when I hit that button, we're gonna see that the changes that are going to take into effect when I go and make that, let's say, nine inches in height, and let's do nine, and hit an enter and now we're going to see that this design is now 71,000 stitches there were 66 trims in there now there's 76 trims and for the most part it did you know I guess convert this fairly well now when I bring it up to full screen I'm just going to hit the zero point on there and I bring it up to full screen and I'm going to turn off the true view and the first thing I want to look at is I want to look for any really long satin stitches where it may have actually gone in and created jumps between them. Now I, I don't see any now but I'm going to do even I guess a little bit more and think about I'm going to take this up to 12 inches in height. We'll bring it back down but I wanted to show you what I was kind of looking for and there we can hopefully see that there is a couple of objects right here where if I look right here close to this you can see a staggering little line there and that basically if I turn off the true view select everything that sort of staggered little line that's here shows me that that stitch has actually gone beyond 12 millimeters in length and it will actually trim between every single one of those objects and that is something I want to look for whenever I scale a design up I want to make sure that I don't see any of those satin stitch objects that are exceeding the 12 millimeters because it'll automatically create invisible embroidery and we've seen that on our uh, you know Facebook groups quite a bit as well people saying where did my stitches go I sewed this out and it missed stitches and they think that the machine has malfunctioned it really it isn't the machine it's a problem with that object itself if I grab that one object and now I go to my effects within that object and let's just go here and I hit auto split when I hit auto split now those those lines those staggered lines have disappeared because it's actually split it at seven millimeters so we're gonna look at it now in true view you can see that now there's a split stitch there it's taken that really long satin stitch and it split it and this is before which on screen it still looks good but if you turn the true view off you can see that you have that sort of staggered look so that's one thing that I always look out for right away now I'm going to bring this into full screen and let's bring this back down to the original nine inches that I wanted to do it at. So here it is at nine inches and I do see that it has uh, 76 trims. And this is something when I am resizing a design I will look at that and I'll say okay I want to have almost the same amount of trims at seven inches as I do nine inches. And one of the things that you can actually see when you're doing that is you can go to your automatic trims and I'm going to turn off my US and go to metric because most of your properties that you have within your actual designs you will get a 
uh, I guess, more realistic representation of measurements in metric as opposed to US. It makes it more difficult. And if I take this now and I say that my automatic trims, I don't want it two millimeters anymore because when I resize that design, even though I digitized all of those objects so that they would connect fairly close together to the next one, when I make that larger by 20 or 30% or whatever it's going to be, it's going to make those separations wider. And if I take that two millimeters and change it to three millimeters now and hit the enter button, I'm going to look at my trim value and my trims just went from 76 to 67. Now that is a win as far as I'm concerned. I actually will look at that and say, okay, I got rid of nine trims and it's one trim off from the original. So that is, you know, pretty close. I'm not going to change it. If you still haven't seen results, then I would change that in increments of 0.5 millimeters as I go forward. And when I change that, now it's down to 64. So now to be honest, I, I don't want it to really be under the original amount of trims because it was 66. I'd rather be close. So I will leave that where it was and for the most part now that I have you know done this design I've increased it two inches I know that you know it should still sew out fine as long as I don't have any really long satin stitches that are going to cause the trims between each of the stitches when it gets longer than 12.1 millimeters uh, and I changed that one little setting and this design should sew out you know pretty well there shouldn't be any huge registration issues because it was digitized in a logical you know steps as far as having all of those color you know changes within there even though I'm duplicating black a couple times and some of the colors are being duplicated more than once that is happening so that I get good registration so this would be a design that I'm pretty happy with pretty fast simple check a couple things save it and I'm good to go now we're going to revert it to the smaller size and see what we need to look at to make sure that it's going to recalculate for the smaller size so for the smaller size, I want this to fit within a five by seven hoop. And I'm going to look at the width and the height. And instead of adjusting the height, I'm gonna adjust the width because if I have this at a five inch uh, maximum, as far as the width of the hoop, I'm gonna take this at 4.95, just so it's a little bit underneath. And that means the height is gonna be 5.5 inches. And then I'm going to hit that and it's going to recalculate it down about 20%. And when it recalculates down, I'm going to look at the same things I did before. I'm going to look at actually the trims in the design. And over on the trims, I can see that it is 66 trims. So I don't need to really look or adjust the trims. Usually when it is reduced in size, it won't affect the trims as much because you're actually reducing the space between the objects. Once in a while though, every design you know has its own mind. And because there is auto join features, you might get more trims and you might have to play with those settings. But for the most part, it's okay. Now, if I am taking a seven inch design though and squeezing it down into a five by seven hoop, I usually will look at the stitch count, which is still 40,000 stitches. It's 39,965. And I will probably go into my uh, custom designs and I am gonna go into my auto fabric and I'm gonna change it from my uh, you know, auto fabric that I have created and I'm gonna actually make it tie silk. Now the tie silk will reduce the density and that's one of the big things that I'm worried about within all of those objects because there's like you know 485 objects that are now being made 20% smaller and I want to reduce the density overall so that it doesn't create bulletproof embroidery. This design will be stitch intensive. Any design that has artistic merit will always be uh, more stitch intensive than a regular just you know filled design with one color. Anytime you add that blending you're going to be getting more more stitches to create that blending effect, but I want to try to reduce it as much as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that auto fabric and I'm going to see that it's going to go down from 39,900 to 37,627. So I've saved a couple thousand stitches there, which is actually pretty impressive given the size of that. So that is the first thing that I'll probably look at. Now then I'm going to uh, call this up full screen so I can see the exact uh, you know, pieces that are here. And I know by looking at this that there is some really small elements of this that I could probably get rid of. And if you've seen some of my extra small designs that I post online, ones that I have taken from, a, let's say, a seven inch size and I've made them smaller than, you know, just that, you know, one inch down, I will go in here 
and I'll start to play with some of the objects and I'll start to select them. So if I go into my uh, select objects, I'm going to grab some objects and I'm going to start just going here and selecting a bunch of objects and I'm going to start deleting them. And as I delete all of these objects, and I'm doing them kind of randomly, but I'm getting rid of some of these really small details that I know won't translate overly well into stitches. And this will probably get rid of some of the trims as well. So if I look on that side, I got rid of those. I think I want to keep this little leaf up here that's going around off the tail, but I could get rid of some of these elements here. So I'm just going to uh, grab those and delete them. And then I'll delete all of these as well because they are just, you know, really small areas that could give me more potential problems and trims. And it's uh, taking it down to 72. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, here within this one object, I'm going to see if I can adjust the pull compensation. And let's change it from, again, US to metric. And I'm going to look at the pull compensation. And I know because uh, color number 20 is just this area right here and the little area in the eye and it's all satin stitches so I know that it grabbed it and it's going to give me a pull comp value and the pull comp is uh, 0.15 I'm going to actually change that to 0.3 instead and hit the enter and if you look at it now let's do the true view and let's go back and there it is before here it is now that has created more pull comp on that very uh, thin that, uh, satin stitch and it's going to end up sewing better and giving me better cleaner results I might even take that up to 0.4 if I wanted to and it would become even a little bit thicker and give me even better results now what I know I'm gonna have to do is when I look at this if I grab all of the objects within color number 19 which is all of these running stitches and the satin stitches I'm not going to be able to change the pull comp that value actually changed to stitch angle and that's because there's two different types of stitches that are being applied so this is going to take me a little bit more time because I'm going to have to go in and choose just the objects I have to hold the control key down I can choose just the satin objects of that black outline stitch and I'm just going to come here and I might do a few of them and then after I've selected these I'm going to change them so there's a bunch here I'm going to change that to point four as well and if you look at the width of that satin going around and then I'll continue on through here and just start grabbing the little objects and trying to make sure that all of those satin objects that are providing the detail around the design I'm going to actually grab those independently and I'm going to take those and I'm going to change this one now to point four so let's just back up and go 0.4 millimeters, hit enter. And now if I look at these little objects here, I'm going to do the same thing because I've grabbed everything except for these objects. I'm going to grab these and I'm going to change these also to 0.4. That way it's going to increase the pull compensation on just those objects. They won't sink into the material as much. And you can see between the two, if I turn the true view on, that is after the pull comp is actually applied, and this is before. So there is a substantial difference with the throw of thread. When you, I guess, reduce something in size that is object base, the, I guess, risk that you uh, are kind of running is that if those stitch lengths get too small, then you're going to have an issue because you're breaking the rules of that stitch type. You don't want to go under half a millimeter of throw of thread between stitches. It can be done, but those stitches will inevitably sink into the fabric and disappear and cause thread breaks and bird's nests and your machine won't function as much as properly. So making a design larger in a way is a little safer and easier. Making a design smaller does require me to go in and make certain modifications. If I did want to go in and really fine tune this, I would probably go in and look at these objects as well, start to change all of these little satin stitch objects and I'm just highlighting them here in the body and I'm going to come here, grab those and I'm going to change all of those as well anywhere that I might see some little satin stitches that look like they're getting too small and I'm going to take those and I'm also going to grab these two here and I'll probably increase those to 0.4 millimeters as well and that way I know that it's going to actually give me better results when it sews. 
here it is now and here it was before you can see how they have gotten thicker and I'm gonna have better results on the machine well I hope that provided more clarity than confusion with regards to resizing the designs I I'm the first one to say I wish it was just as simple as clicking a button but there's other things that you have to consider and that is part of the beauty of digitizing and creating designs for embroidery is there is I guess a lot of thought and you know process that needs to be put into it to get good results it's part of the learning curve but it's also part of what makes it fun and that's what we try to do with our courses and all of our reference materials is teach you a foundations that you can start building on so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time